Hi there, welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. This is BTEC Applied Science Unit 5 Chemistry and it's going to look at EZ isomerism in alkenes. In terms of the specification, this is a learning aim A2 as part of the organic chemistry and it fits under the symmetric and asymmetric alkenes and we will cover some sigma and pi bonding but you will see this in more detail with hybridization in the next video. First up though, if you don't subscribe, please do. Your support is very much appreciated. Use the comments and the like features and let me know what you think. So, we're probably familiar already from GCSE that an alkene is a carbon double bonded to a carbon. And they have the general formula CNH2N. And that shows that it's, sat un, it's unsaturated. It has a carbon-carbon double bond. Now, the first misconception that people will have coming from GCSE is they will think that a double bond is just the same as two single bonds. And it's definitely not. There are two types of covalent bonding going on here. And you can see that I've labelled or named the two types of bonds as a sigma bond or a pi bond. We can use the symbol for sigma and the single for, symbol for pi, or we can call them sigma and pi. Now, a sigma bond, a sigma covalent bond, is the most common type of covalent bond. That's when the pair of electrons being shared is directly between the two nuclei. So we know that a definition for a covalent bond is the electrostatic attraction between a shared pair of electrons and two nuclei. And that is correct for all covalent bonds, whether it's sigma or pi. But a sigma bond is when the shared pair of electrons is directly between the two nuclei as a result usually of the overlap of these s orbitals. So you can see that they're directly between the two. Now a pi bond is different to a sigma bond. A pi bond is a result of our p orbitals. So if you recall your knowledge on orbitals way back at the start of first year, we had p orbitals and they kind of looked like this. We called them dumbbell shape. Now what can happen is when these electrons are involved in bonding, these p orbitals will overlap. And what we end up with is an area above and below. And the electrons are found in these electron clouds. So the electrons are shared in these overlap of p orbitals. Now I'm only drawing it two dimensional. This would be a three, di a three dimensional. You could imagine it kind of like wrapping around. So we have the these two electrons in a pi bond and a sigma bond. So a double bond is in fact a pi bond and a sigma bond, two types of bonding. The pi bond is the overlap of p orbitals. So we, are, we have two pairs of electrons being shared in this double bond. We have four electrons here in this double bond, which is why it's an area of high electron density. A double bond is an area of high electron density. We saw that in the specification. So two key things to take away from a carbon-carbon double bond. Number one, it's an area of high electron density. So there are more electrons in a double bond than you're going to find in a single bond. That's possibly obvious, but it is an area of electron density. And also the second thing to take away is that a double bond is locked. There's no free rotation. They can't spin or rotate. And the opposite can be said for a sigma bond. So for these sigma bonds here, they can actually rotate. Kind of imagine if you've, you've made a molly mod, the single bond you can kind of rotate and flip around. This double bond is locked. You don't get any rotation. There is no rotation. And that's quite important because that gives rise to isomers, to geometric isomerism. Now, geometric isomerism is when we have the same structural formula, but a different arrangement in space. And the simplest example I can give there is something like this. That's a CH3 group. 
and a H. So this is butene. It's butene with a double bond between the second and third carbon. So that's butene. And on the right hand side, I'm also going to draw butene. However, you can see that those two methyl groups are on opposite sides, opposite ends. We have the CH3 at the top and then the CH3 at the bottom on the right hand side and on the left hand side we have the CH3 at the top, both of them at the top. Now because we don't get free rotation, this can't just rotate and be the same as the other one. They are definitely different. They are classed as geometric isomers. They have the same structural formula, which in this case is CH3, CH, CH, CH3. And if I do the structural formula of the one on the right, it's exactly the same. CH3, CH, double bond C, H, CH3. But they are definitely not the same thing. If we were to make these with molly mods, they are non-superimposable. They have a different arrangement in space. So we need to come up with a way of naming these isomers. So let me draw these two again for us. And we, we use the CIP rules and you do need to be able to assign CIP rules. So I'm just going to draw the two isomers out again. Here we go. Now what we do is we identify the double bond first. So let's identify the double bond. And let's draw a line through that double bond. Now I'm going to look at the left hand side on both cases and I'm going to assign a priority to one of the groups. We have two groups. On the left hand side we have a CH3 and a H and that's the same in both examples with a CH3 and a H. Now what we do is we look at the atom that's bonded to the carbon so in this case it's H and in this case it's C and again it's C and H and what we do is we look at the atomic number of that atom this has an atomic number six this has the atomic number one we use the periodic table to find the atomic numbers oops why am I writing H it's one and what we do is the highest wins, simple as that. So this wins, doo -doo, gold medal, and this has come second. So there's always a first and a second place. First, second. So we awarded first place here and second place down here. First place up here, second place down here. Now we're going to go through the same reasoning, but this time I'm going to look at the right hand side. So I'm going through the same logic. On the right hand side we've got a carbon and hydrogen this is atomic number six this is atomic number one six wins do 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 that's the highest so the highest priority is there the second priority is there i'll apply the same logic here we've got hydrogen which is one carbon atomic number six six is higher than one so the number one priority is here second priority is here now what we do is we look and if the if the high priority groups are on the same side as in here look so the number one priority is on the same side here this is called the Z isomer now my understanding is the Z comes from zusammen in German which means together so the Z is zusammen together and if the number one priority groups are not together they're opposite as they are in this example here they're opposite that is the e isomer now again i believe that is entgegen which means opposite in german but someone can correct me if you think i'm wrong so that's our e and z isomers so assigning priority rules based upon the atomic number so let's look at a slightly more difficult example then So this one is slightly more difficult so let's talk through the rules again so let's draw that line through that double bond and then let's just look at the right hand side to start with the right hand side is fairly straightforward 
we've got the atomic number 6 and the atomic number 17. 17 wins hands down, so number 1 is at the top, number 2 is down the bottom. Let's have a look on the left hand side. We've got the atomic number 6 and the atomic number 6. Problem. Okay, so there's a tie. Then what we do, if it's a tie, they're going to go to the next biggest down the line. So in the case of the, the carbon at the top, it's a carbon bonded to two hydrogens, but another carbon. So let's go to the, to the next biggest. So it's 6-6, six, six, this one. The CH3 group, it's 6. And then the next biggest we can find is 1. So it's lost in a playoff, this. So this has come second, and this is number 1. So now we find that our two number 1s are at the top. They are together, Zuzaman. So this is the Z isomer. Okay, I'm going to suggest you pause the video now and then you try and do these two yourself. Identify them as E or Z isomers, applying our SIP rules. And when you're ready, unpause the video and see if you got them right. Right, let's start over here on the left then. So draw your line through the bond. On the right hand side, number one, hang on a minute, what am I doing? The right hand side has atomic number one and this has atomic number nine. Nine wins. So number one priority is down the bottom. Left hand side, atomic number 17 and atomic number nine. 17 wins. So number one, number two. So we have opposite here. This is end get this is E, the E isomer. Entgegen. Don't need to know the Entgegen Zusammen, it just helps us remember them. So this is the E isomer on the left. Right hand side, draw a line. I'm going to start on the left here. Atomic number 9, atomic number 12. Atomic number 6. Not 12, that's the mass. So it's atomic number. And again, it's quite common for students to ask me. Um, so, you know, some textbooks and some version guides will state it's mass, it's not it is atomic number. So nine does win. Nine wins. Number one is up the top. Number two is down the bottom. And I've been a little awkward on the one on the right because we go six and six. It's a tie. The next biggest on the bottom is six. The next biggest is bromine, which I'm now closing my eyes and I can't remember, but it's much bigger than six. I know for a fact. Um, I don't have a periodic table, I know the mass, but it's definitely, definitely bigger than 6. So, don't know what it is. You can be smug and find out, but that's definitely bigger. I'm confident it's bigger than 6. So, number 1 is at the top. So, this is the Zuzaman, the Z isomer. So, as I said earlier, the next video is going to look in much more detail at the sigma and pi bonding, and in particular, the hybridization. You will find the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.